This screencast is one in a series on process calculations, and the title is The Principle of Mass Balance. The content is the general mass balance equation, some examples illustrating the differences between open systems and closed systems, reaction systems and non-reaction systems, and finally steady state systems and dynamic systems. There will be some words about notation, and also about the mathematical consequences. The general mass balance equation builds on the fact that matter is conservative. That means it cannot be destroyed or produced, but it may be transformed, and it may be transported from one place to another. The mass balance equation states that systems may receive matter across its boundaries, may transform matter within its boundaries, and it may emit matter across its boundary. And the consequence of this is that it may lead to a change in the amount of matter within the system boundary. The terms in the mass balance equation are the following. One is the input term, that is, the flux across the boundary from the surrounding into the system. Another one is the output term, representing the flux across the boundary from the system to the surrounding. A third one is the production term, and it represents reactions that, takes place, that take place in the system. If the production is positive, this means that we have a formation of a substance. If the production is negative, it means that we have a consumption of a substance. And the fourth term is the accumulation term. And it represents the rate of change in the system. If this accumulation term is greater than zero, we have an increase in, of a substance within the system. If the accumulation term is less than zero, we have a decrease. And this gives us the general mass balance equation, which says that the input plus the production equals the output plus the accumulation. And in this equation, both the production term and the accumulation term may be positive or negative. In the first case, let us take a look at an open system. In this open system, we have an input greater than zero and an output greater than zero. If we don't have any reaction, the production is zero. And we may also have the case, when this steady state case, where the accumulation is zero. And in that case, the mass balance equation is reduced to the input equals the output. And if we try to find an example of this, we can think about water flowing through a dead lake where actually nothing happens. In the second case, we've added the production. So, we have an open system with an input and an output, and we have a reaction term, a production term that differs from zero. But it may be either positive or negative. And, since the accumulation term is zero, the system is at steady state. So it's an open reaction st system at steady state. In that case, the mass balance equation becomes input plus production equals the output. And here we can clearly see that if the production is positive, the output will be greater than the input. If the production is negative, the output will be smaller than the input. And to find an example, we can just take a look at ourselves with a CO2 respiration. We have an input of CO2. We have a production of CO2 within our bodies. And we have an output of CO2. A third case is a closed system. No inputs, no outputs. But we have a production that, differ from, that differs from zero. And we also have an accumulation that differs from zero, which means that in this case, we have a dynamic non-steady state system. The mass balance equation becomes production equals the accumulation. 
which means that the production and accumulation must have the same signs. Because if the production is positive, we must have an increase of the substance in the system. And it's easy to find an example. Let's just take a look at the good old test tube with a chemical reaction. It's a closed container with a reaction in it, which means we have a change in concentration, a change in amount within the test tube. A fourth example can be called a partly open system where the input equals zero but an output greater than zero. And if we have no reaction, we have a non-reaction system, no pr production term equals zero, but we have an accumulation term that differs from zero. And in this case, the accumulation term must be negative because the mass balance equation is Zero equals the output plus the accumulation. And to find an example, we can just take a container that's being emptied. For example, a balloon that we make a hole in. We have, then we have an output of air and the, we have an, the accumulation of air within the balloon is negative. We will use the following notation. Mass fluxes of substances expressing kilograms or kilograms per hour, will be, denot be denoted W. While the molar flux of substances, moles or moles per hour, etc., will be denot denoted F. The production terms can either be expressed in terms of total production in the system, for example, moles or moles per hour, and for that we're going to use the Greek letter Xi. A specific volume-based reaction rate, moles per cubic meter per hour, for example, will be denoted with a small r. Regarding the accumulation term, if n is the number of moles in the system and v is the volume of the system, then c is the concentration. So the change in molar content, for example, the molar moles per hour, will be dn dt, the change in number of moles with time. And that will equal the derivative of the product of the volume, volume and the concentration. Some mathematical consequences are, for systems at steady state, we have the general mass balance equation, input plus production equal output. And this equation only contains algebraic terms. That means that when we do problem solving for steady state systems, we have a set of linear or nonlinear algebraic equations to solve. When we deal with dynamic systems, non steady state systems, the mass balance equations always include dn dt, or the derivative of the product of v times c. That means we have a differential equation. And problem solving always involves analytical or numerical solution of ordinary or partial differential equations. Let's review the content. The mass balance equation was defined as the input plus the production equals the output plus the accumulation. And we illustrated different mass balance equations for open systems and closed systems, reaction systems and non-reaction systems, and steady-state systems and dynamic systems. We looked at the notation and also at the mathematical consequences.